That's my dog right there. That's right. Go get, it. Garth, get you a pap. <laughs> That's them girls. She got her own shoe. She got her own shoe. Give it up. This is a dunks. These are Lisa Leslie dunks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to Nike. 25th anniversary of the WNBA, and they came out with the dunks. So yeah. How, how about it's just so cool to have you in front of me right now? Yeah, thank you. you know what I'm saying? Leslie, wait, can I just stop you on the show for a second? Because okay. your book is amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Amazing. I don't know, people, if you haven't got it, get it, listen to it. I'm on chapter six. I've been laughing, crying, laughing again, crying. Yeah. But it's amazing, thank amazing. You so much. I laughed and cried a lot too. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> It's awesome. Like, we're both from the, like, same area, right? right? Like, we both played ball in L.A. I, I don't think I was as good as you. I definitely, <laughs> I definitely know I was not as good as you. Yeah, I know that, too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's OK, because you played ball, and you went to college playing wow. ball. That's yeah. awesome. And look, I thought I played you in high school. I, you remember when we first met, I was like, yeah. I played against you. Remember, we almost got into a fight, and you was like, girl. <laughs> No, I did have a few fights. <laughs> I, I, I did. I, I would say my alter ego is probably your persona as exactly. a common, as a comedian. <laughs> so it's like, I'm very calm and collected off the court, but on the court, my game is like how you talk. Exactly. Always. Exactly. Do like, but you don't want to see house. me. Don't come in my house. Right. That's what we were telling them. Don't come in our house. Exactly. Okay, so if we played ball like at our best, me at my best, you at your best, mm. who you think would have won? No, that's not a good question. <laughs> that's not a good question you want to do over? Because <laughs> me at my best, is the best. Wow! Like, <laughs> I mean... I'm just gonna let you know I would've fouled you all the oh, time. Oh, yeah, for I sure. I'm losing all five fouls on you. But just know, I was the kind of player that I just match whatever energy you come. So if oh. you want to fight, we can fight. If you want to play nice, we can play nice. Like, I really believe in that, too. But I, I love you, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing, though, right? Because we yeah. got a chance to be, like, so fierce and to play a sport that we love. Yes. And for me, it was really about the next generation. You know, mm -hmm. we didn't get as much spotlight as young women get now, especially yes. in the WNBA. But having that opportunity and that platform to be a role model for the next generation, that's all I kept thinking about is those little girls out there yeah. who are going to see me, who want to yeah. be like me. Yes. Yes. So that was it. Yes. Lipstick and all, you yes. know? Because it was so crazy. When I was coming up, we didn't have the WNBA. You know, we can go overseas yes. and play. And just to see it form and you just, like I said, made it look good and looked good doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, Thank you. They called you Hollywood, Hollywood right? Yes. And because you knew how to dress. This is the question I have. We're both tall. Mm -hmm. Well, how hard was it for you to find clothes? Oh, the worst. All my clothes were men's clothes, first off. It was yeah. like a men's blazer. My mom would, like, get it tailored. I wore men's jeans. I had to get it. You know, I wore, like, a... Well, back then, I only wore, like, a two or a right. four. Right. And I'm mean, an eight now. Uh -huh. But um, <laughs> it, it's, like, it was tough because everything had to be altered for me, mm -hmm. but I had to buy men's clothes. But then I'd wear, like, V-neck shirts. Mike, when I look back at those outfits before I started making money, it was tough, but I always had a, a feminine nature, and mm -hmm. I feel like my mom would always teach me to just be true to myself. I, mm -hmm. Everybody else is taken, right? So you have to show up. I started playing basketball late at 12, okay. so I was really into fashion and etiquette and uh, wanting to be a model. Wow. That was my thing, but basketball just came, and it was like, so this is my way. Yeah. How did, how did you become so good? Like, was it coaching, or was you already, like... <laughs> like oh, thank you. Yeah. It was my, it's my work ethic. I'm, now, first off, I'm very competitive. Now, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm like Spades, Dominoes, Pictionary, yeah. whatever it is, so I'm trying to win. It. <laughs> like, it's not fun for you. Don't come to right. my house if you're not ready to compete. <laughs> like, people that say, like, oh, no, it's, it's not that serious. No. Oh, no, oh, you don't, probably don't oh, want to no, come no, over no, here. Don't come over here, yeah. Don't yeah. come over here. I don't want to take the fun out of it for you, yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to sit it out. Yeah. But if I'm playing, <laughs> I'm coming to win. Oh, I will curse you out if you're my partner in Spade. Oh, no, uh, yeah, don't no, renege. Get, get up! Don't get up. Get up from the table now. Excuse me. Don't renege. Did you see that joke? Did oh. you see me leave with the diamond? That's because I only got one. If you renege, you never invited back to my house. Don't come back. <laughs> People might not know. Renege means to play a book that yes. is either you 
do have another in that suit, or you're not paying attention to the game and they you don't realize. They already know what that is. Right. <laughs> Com competition is my thing, though. So I've, I've always loved being competitive, but fashion was something that I liked. I couldn't afford to do at a high level. But I just feel like when you have style, style yeah. is important to me. And sometimes I look at some of the videos, I'm like, girlfriend, mm. that was not it. Yeah, because I don't think I had style until I got a stylist. And that's right. for real. I'm not gonna... <laughs> like I'm 10 not weeks gonna... ago? No. Yeah, until, <laughs> until Brian started dressing me, child. He saw my closet when he first met me. He was like, oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, <laughs> uh, oh, you know, I mean, okay. it's, it's, yeah, because it's, it's just buying stuff that fit, and New York and Company was the only place that, oh, no. that had jeans and stuff that was... I'm sorry. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was rough, but they was, like, you know, not to shit on them. I don't want to shit on New York No, but Company, New York but... Company now, they did they great. Got, Gabrielle oh, no. Union was they with them, they, like, oh, they no, came they around. They, they got their thing together. But at but first, it was kind of silky, but, like... But that, I still like their jeans because their jeans was long enough. Oh. Them and tall girls. You remember Long yeah. Tall Sally? Yes. Girl, yes. Long yes. Tall Sally? See, y'all don't know the troubles of a tall girl. Right. With the big feet. Thank like, goodness for Fashion shoes? Nova. Yes. Oh my God. No, Payless started doing the Payless. big shoes. Payless. They started doing the big shoes. You went way back. Payless. Oh, yes, I did. Payless. No, Nordstrom Rack. Nordstrom Rack. Nordstrom's Rack. Nordstrom but Payless Rack. was the first ones. Like, yeah. you could get a pair no, of Nordstrom, kids. Nordstrom Rack. You could get like a size 14 at Nordstrom Rack. I think Rack. Payless came out before Nordstrom's uh -huh. Rack. No, no. No. Nordstrom Rack came out. Well, Payless was out, but they wasn't doing big shoes oh, like Nordstrom no, no. Rack. Girl, yeah. we'll talk about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm so, sorry. So, let me ask you a question, okay? So, would you... Sorry, have... is this water? That's water, water. Okay. yeah, that's water. Um, that's actually alcohol. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, would you, like, when the NBA, uh, WNBA started, I know it was pretty exciting. Yes. But would you like to play the WNBA when it first started or the WNBA now? Well, that's a great question. First off, I started in the beginning, so I was one of the faces of the WNBA. Right. But if I played now, I would have made so much more money because yeah. Yeah. I was into fashion and, yeah. you know, skin care, hair care, being a role model, deodorant, anything, yeah. Toothpaste for teeth, you know? Yeah, right. Uh, it's not too late, folks out there. <laughs> uh, you know. Like they can get your number. Because they can call saying. me. But yeah, I think I would have had a more lucrative uh, yeah. outcome if I played now. And I still would have been blocking shots. Like, you know, me and you Asia. Would have been me and Asia that. would have been going at oh it. Oh my God. I, I love, love Asia. Her. Oh, I love her. <laughs> I love her. Now, because you dunked. Yes. You dunked. And I'm going to ask you the question, because, see, I know a lot of men ask you this, because, you know, men love to ask dumbass questions. But <laughs> I know a lot of men have asked you, like, hey, should we lower the rim so y'all can dunk more and it could be more exciting? Right. What's your answer to that? Shut the... F oh. oh. No. <laughs> My answer is no. I think the game is amazing. Um, if really anybody is. has watched the WNBA, you already know these ladies are playing at such a high level. It, it, it's like blurred lines with the men and the women. Yes, the dunk is amazing. Yes, more women have dunked, but um, I wouldn't change anything about our game. The product is phenomenal. Even college women's basketball is phenomenal. Can't wait for Angel Reese and, yes. and uh, Caitlin Clark to get yes. to the WNBA. Like, it's just amazing. We're doing a great job. So, will we look at the camera right now and look at all those people who... Which one you want me to look at? Uh, one or two? I don't know. Which one we look at? This one right here? <laughs> this one right here? Um, all the people that doubted that the WNBA NBA was going to make it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you voted! Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Hey, we at the bank, though. We at the bank, We right? cash and checks. That's right. <laughs> now, now uh, what I, I heard about NIL deals, I think they call it NIL. Is it NIL, yes. NIL Main. deals. Uh -huh. Yeah, so they get those in college. Oh, which, child, we was, I was so broke in college. Like, yes. like, what, like, what is the advantage of that? Because, you know, mm. they make more money than being in the WNBA. I do know that. Which So here's the deal. Uh, yeah, in college, I had $5. I used to get a burrito yeah. at the burrito truck, and you eat oh, half you before practice. A burrito? Pra a burrito, because <laughs> you can eat half before practice and then half after the practice. Right. NIL, these women and men are getting paid so much money for their deals. The same That's thing good. else, whether it's cosmetics, outfits, they're getting their Nike and other shoe deals um, early on when you're in college. So imagine that. I had to wait. I signed my first Nike deal my first day after 
my last game. So I had to be completely finished from being eligible in college before I could go pro. Uh -huh. Now, you do realize that only applies in yeah. usually sports that are dominated by African Americans. Mm -hmm. So that happens to the football players and the basketball players, but there are other sports that that does not apply. You can, you can get endorsement deals in other sports, tennis, um, soccer, you know, other sports. So it's interesting that this NIL really opens the door for so many athletes, and especially athletes from our communities, that mm -hmm. there is no yeah. trust fund happening, yeah. that they are the first millionaires ever in the, and and their first family. And making money to even be able to support the Absolutely. family, to be able to send money back. It's yes. like a lot of people are leaving a big family that, like, they probably was working and helping. Yes. And, yeah, man. Let me just tell you, my mom drove an 18-wheeler truck. My mom would give me $200 if she could. $200 is a lot of money. A, yeah. She would give me $200, and if she could do it every month or every other month, and I would have to manage while at USC with all these kids who come from a background of money, yeah. and I'm trying to manage this $200 just to, like, make it, hence the $5 burritos. Right. But, so, you know, your eating is not as healthy as it could be because you don't have mm -hmm. enough money to necessarily eat healthy. So I think the NIL deal is opening doors for so many kids, and the key to that is going to be money management mm -hmm. because a lot of times we ignore those conversations because we didn't have money. Yeah. So if you don't have money, how do you know how to take care of money how to invest money, and hence, that's how I got into real estate. Yeah, yeah, because I'm like, yeah, how come we, we, we need a class on teaching kids how to yes. check books and bank accounts yes. and interest rates? Yeah, that, yeah. That's my biggest advice. I, uh, I'm, I became a real estate professional with my husband. We have the Lockwood Group, which is our real estate company. We are in the luxury space with Keller Williams. But why? It's because it's important to invest your money and get the return on your money. And a lot of times, kids, especially when you're first generation, you're thinking house, cars, chains, necklaces, stuff, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what we see that you think people with money. But in fact, it's about that education of where, how can you make this money, make money for you. You mm -hmm. will not be able to play forever, yes. right? Yes. And you got to take care of your kids. And you get old. But people, when you, you know, when you're 19 or 20, you can't. 40 is old to a 19 year old. And, yeah, and you you're don't like know 40? that you will turn 40 and not be able to play right. that sport. Yeah. Yes, and that money could have just created compound interest for you. It's a way to make a living for not only your family, but the family that you might have in the future. And so that's always our message when we're trying to get our real estate company out there. We deal with a lot of celebrities and athletes and helping them to invest that money so that they'll have it to return and share with their family. You so know, let me know when you're ready to buy some Girl, moves. you know I am. <laughs> you know I am. I, I want to ask you, and this is probably something just off the cuff for me, yeah. is what would you tell black girls like us that's tall and awkward and don't know how to really express how they feel or yeah. just, just kind of scared and walk hunched over yeah. because they're ashamed of their height or what they look like. What would you say to them? My first thing is about having faith. I was a child that had so much faith in God and I was praying like, Lord, let them see me as beautiful. Like, you know, you want to be appealing, but it's hard when you just don't. I mean, we didn't have all this stuff all hooked up. You're just a regular kid looking out there in the world. And I feel sorry sometimes for these kids because they have social media. So yeah. they're being exposed to even more beautiful, perfect-looking people with all these filters and all these things, I, I, could, they would, I would be so discouraged, I think, yeah. if I was a young kid now. But I would just say to learn to love yourself and then just be patient. Write down your goals. That was the biggest thing for me. My short-term goals were goals I wanted to achieve within one year, and then my long-term goals were goals I wanted to achieve within five years. And those goals kept me focused. I put them on my mirror in the bathroom. I put them on the refrigerator because, you know, our girls got to eat. And I would go. But when I see these goals, my sacrifice was go to the gym and put up the 200 shots, 500 shots, yeah. as opposed to going to the mall hanging out with my homegirls. That's real talk, though. That's real talk. You sacrifice. Gotta be uncomfortable. You got to be uncomfortable to be successful yeah. sometimes Facts. for a little while. You know, you got to work it. One of the things Kobe and I would always talk about, the great Kobe, I love him mm. so much, that it's just everybody's not willing to make the sacrifice. No, no. And they don't understand. They they want the they want the now, but they don't want the how. Yeah, yeah, that's it's what, hard work. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's hard yeah. work. Oh my God! Uh -huh. Why am I in love with you? My new friend! Oh my God! Why are you coming to my house? You coming to Thanksgiving?